Hey Canucks fans, lots of NHL news today, especially when it comes to personnel moves in NHL front offices. So I thought now would be a good day to kind of get your take on your confidence level on the management team of the Vancouver Canucks, in particular Jim Rutherford and Patrick Alvine. Now it's June 1st and it simply feels like there's more, there's more hockey news to talk about, whether it was Jet Wu signing yesterday or the fact that all these hirings and firings are happening in NHL front offices. We have the draft to look forward to in a few weeks. And of course, July 1st, one month away, the start of free agency. And then also the, a chance for players with their current teams to start talking about contract extensions, including Elias Pettersson of the Vancouver Canucks. So again, June 1st, Stanley Cup Finals starting up on Saturday. It simply feels like a good time. It feels like there's going to be more hockey content to digest over the next little bit. And June's the, obviously the best month of the year. It, it hosts the Clay Tritium of the first day of Father's Day, the first day of summer, and my birthday, all in the span of one week. So that's why I think June is the best month in the in the in the year. Feel free to agree or disagree. Let's talk about everything that's going around in the NHL and how it relates to the Vancouver Canucks. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about head coaches, although there's been a lot of movement in the NHL. Spencer Carberry, after two years as assistant coach in Toronto, now the new head coach of the Washington Capitals. We have the Predators firing John Hines, replacing him with Andrew Brunette. We know there are coaching vacancies in Calgary and New York, among other cities. But I don't think there's any debate that the Vancouver Canucks, Rick Tockett has had a pretty good start to his tenure with the team. Now, uh, I know a lot of people are upset that he, uh, the team played itself out of a lottery contention, but that's in the past right now. Well, I think what we can appreciate is the discipline, the structure, the systems that Tockett has brought into this club. And we look forward to seeing where he takes the club start uh, coming uh, this fall hopefully with a healthy Demko and a, and a better back end and all those things. I do want to talk about front offices. And in particular, we saw Kyle Dubas get fired from Toronto and being hired as the new president of hockey operations in Pittsburgh. Now, he's the new president. They still got to hire a GM. Remember, it's Brian Burke and the president, Ron Hextall, as the GM. And those guys were fired earlier this spring. So now at least Dubas is the president and then they still have to hire a GM. Then on the Calgary side, you have Brad Tree Living, excuse me, you have Brad Tree Living getting hired as the GM of Toronto, not the Calgary side, the Toronto side, hired as the GM as Toronto after serving many years in Calgary. Now, both Tree Living and Dubas had press availabilities today, and they both said the right things. They, were, they didn't talk too much about uh, their previous teams, but they talked about their excitement about being in their new markets, obviously their desire to help build those teams, their new teams, into winners. And... Um, I, I think both of them came. They're they're both smart, young guys, uh, sharp, and quite popular. I, I think in, in hockey circles, and so I actually think the, these are good hires for for both teams. Uh, for Pittsburgh, Dubas talked about how um, you know he doesn't want to. If he's a betting man, he wouldn't want to bet against a team that had Crosby, Malkin, and Latang, for instance. And so he was saying a lot of the right things, including that his his desire to search uh, to hire. A GM relatively quickly. When it came to Brad Tree Living, um, he also said the right things, uh, and he, he knows that he's got a lot of work ahead of him, and that he's in a, in a hockey mad market. But he also can rely on his experience, and he's not afraid to be, make big moves. I talked about this on my live stream last night. You look at the whole uh, Kachuk for Uyghur and Hudo uh, deal that he did in Calgary, and um, yeah, despite how well Kachuk is doing, I, I think many people thought he did really well. He made out really well in that deal at the time, and Huberto can still have a bounce back season going forward. So, uh, Tree Living not afraid to make bold moves, and that's something he might have to do in Toronto. So, let's paint the, let's say, set the scene now for the Vancouver Canucks. Jim Ruther, so Jim Benning and John Rise, Weisbrod, the they're basically the GM and assistant GM. They're let go in December of 2021, and then there's been no president since uh, Trevor Linden left um, a couple of years before that. So. What they did is they hired Jim Rutherford in December of 2021, and he became the president of Hockey Ops and the interim GM. And then they hired Patrick Alvin six weeks later in January to be the full-time GM. Meanwhile, with uh, Patrick Alvin as the GM, he's got assistant GMs in Derek Clancy, in Emily Castonguay, in Cameron Granado, and he also has the Sadin Salinian on as as um, uh, you know as advisors. And then on the management side as well, you have uh, Stan Smeal uh, working closely with Jim Rutherford. But if we're talking about Rutherford and Alvin specifically, I want you to tell me 
what your confidence level is in them. Now let's start with Jim Rutherford. Um, he obviously knows how to build winners. He's from, come from Pittsburgh, Carolina. We're not going to rehash all his resume. We did that when he got hired a year and a half ago. But what has he done since then? Well, I think off the ice, we see a lot of things. I know it's not just his decision, but every, things as, as recently as the new VIP section in, in, the, in the stands in Rogers Arena, they've talked about a better practice facility and um, they've made a lot of changes to their training and medical staff, for instance. But when it comes to the actual moves of this team, the direction of the team, I think the Abbotsford Canucks have been a really, really good success story for this club and, and the flexibility that you have with your AHL club just an hour down the highway. And uh, Rutherford, what's interesting about him is he started off making a lot of media appearances. And then I think he was getting uh, uh, caught, not caught, he wasn't... He, it, basically, a lot of people were calling him out or really going after him at, at, as to what he was saying in these media, media availability. So then suddenly a few months ago, he's, he's kind of disappeared. And then you saw the the, the rise of Patrick Alvin uh, being more visible and taking on more of those type of opportunities. Under Rutherford's watch, there's been a couple of tricky things as well. Um, some off-ice stuff for sure that uh, they got to sort out from an HR perspective, management-wise, and then even... Um, under his watch, of course, uh, I think the biggest, the biggest kind of negative story was the, was the, uh, you know, the dismissal of Bruce Boudreau, and not so much the hiring of Rick Tockett, that's been fine, but rather how Bruce Boudreau was, was uh, kind of left twisting the wind a little bit, and a lot of fans did not like the way that went. So uh, again, Rutherford taking more of a back seat. I think he's obviously going to be working in concert with, with Patrick Alvin, especially throughout the summer as they look to remake this team. Now, with Patrick Alvin, he's got a lot of work to do. He's, he did a lot of work. At the trade deadline, they made some really good moves, um, uh, took some low risks. They um, acquired guys like Kratzov, Josh Bloom. Um, they got draft picks for trading away guys like Luke Shen and Riley Stillman. Then they made the big trade for Philip Hronik, which hopefully will work out. And um, there's that part. So there a lot, and there's going to be a lot more transactions that happen. Are, how are they going to wiggle? Uh, make some room under the salary cap. Will they entertain a buyout? Are they going to be able to work on extension for Elias Pettersson? Uh, who are they going to draft? So Patrick Alvin, his, his name's going to be in the news a lot in this next month or two. Then you have the actual team itself. Or how much are they going to improve on the ice? How much are they going to build excitement in this fan base for a season, hopefully a bounce back season from this past season. So uh, I think with Patrick Alvin, when it comes to actually managing, managing this team and how they're going to look on the ice, he, um, he has a lot of work cut out for him. And um, I think it's an exciting time, quite, quite frankly, to be a Canucks fan. Uh, there's some, you know, they brought in guys like Hirose and McCord, and then, um, you know, uh, some other guys from Sweden that will be coming over to try and crack the lineup. So I think there's gonna be some competition, but even before we get to that, it's going to be a fascinating month between clearing cap space, between working on extensions, free agency, and of course the draft and, and potential transactions around the draft day table. I think this is going to be a very exciting time to be a Canucks fan. Now, do you have confidence in these two? Uh, I guess that's the big question of the day. I do. I'm not just saying this because uh, you know I'm a homer or because I'm a Canucks season ticket holder. I, I do, you know, I, I can see why, looking back, I can see why they made the Hronik trade. I know we haven't been able to appreciate Hronik because he only played in four games, and I know we gave up a couple of draft picks to do so. But um, I, I, mean, I am excited to see what he can do. I'm excited to see how the defense shakes out. I'm excited to see if the Canucks are able to bolster their scoring with a, with a third-line center. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with Besser, Garland, Myers, OEL, and um, the battle between Silovs and, and Martin between Thatcher Demko. And you have all those things kind of setting the, the landscape for Patrick Alvin trying to consistently improve this team. I know he's not afraid to make moves. He made the Hronik trade, he made the Horvat trade, and some little moves as well. So he's not afraid to pull the trigger. So I think that, that makes me kind of uh, hopeful and really intrigued. Excited, maybe, maybe excited is too strong of a word, but I'm certainly intrigued as to how the Canucks are going to shape up over the next month so overall my confidence level uh, as to how they're going to reshape this team and my confidence level in in jim rutherford and patrick alvin overall i say is fairly good it's not excellent it's not amazing but it's not bad um i i can see where they're going i can see 
how their their hands were tied when they came in and they're trying to work their way out of some some messes that they inherited so overall i'm i'm gonna say i'm fairly confident in in rutherford and alvin i'd love to bump that up to very confident or extremely confident but for now i'll say that i am fairly confident let me know how you're feeling what you feel about your confidence level in this management team leave a comment i'd love to read react and apply as always shout out to my sponsors van city experts real estate perform transform personal training and weight loss thank you to legendary lucas gates legendary carol bovalander and legendary andrew chang and to hall of fame and franchise members as well and thanks to all of you always appreciate you never take you for granted on your way out subscribe like the video leave a donation become a member upgrade your membership and my next stream will actually be saturday night game over stanley cup finals i'm joining peter from calgary and lauren from toronto as we break down game one of vegas florida on the sdpn channel in the meantime stay safe stay healthy take care of yourselves and take care of each other have a great day god bless and go connects go